I've had a lot of a lot of opportunities to pursue those interests, and because I do not have many constraints that many other people have, and I, for example, I've had the chance to work with Amartya Sen, which has been a big influence and uh, has helped in many ways. Um, and uh, when you say what is what is the kind of experience that has uh, uh, made you think that way, I think that not more than academic training, much more than academic training. Uh, in the recent past, it has been the experience of uh, being associated with the various social movements in India, and particularly movements for uh, economic and social rights, like the right to education, the right to food, uh, the right to employment. And this has been a great educational experience in many ways. Um, and it has also mean sp meant spending a lot of time in the field, um, you know, conducting field surveys or being part of uh, grassroots campaigns for these economic and social rights. And when you spend a lot of time in the field, you start seeing things in a somewhat different light when, when, than when you, you know, when you study, <coughs> study um, <coughs> development. No, no. <coughs> no you, you, you acquire a different outlook on uh, many things. For example, <coughs> in the last few years, I've been in, uh, involved in the uh, monitoring and implementation of the Employment Guarantee Act in, in India. Employment Guarantee Act is an act that gives people a right to being employed on public, local public works within 15 days. If they apply for work and if they don't get employment, then they have to be given an unemployment allowance. It's a very progressive legislation, uh, very unique actually, which was a bit of a political miracle for various reasons. It creates an opportunity for people to have up to 100 days of employment per year under this law. It's a law, it's not just a scheme, it's a, it's a legal right. Um, and I think it could really have uh, uh, wonderful effects, uh, not just in terms of provi providing security. I mean, the first objective, of course, is to provide some kind of social security to people. But uh, it can also uh, bring about a lot of very interesting social, uh, economic and political change, uh, because it uh, reduces migration, because it, uh, it is implemented through local institutions that have a new lease of life uh, through this uh, law because it helps women to come out of the household and to be become part of the public sphere because the, they, they work together at the work site and they pr start taking place in public meetings to discuss the planning of works. So there are all kinds of really interesting aspects uh, that can be really transform transformative. But when you look at the reality of implementation of this law and how people have to fight at every step, first to get work, then to get their wages, then to be paid the minimum wage, you know, it is really a bitter, very bitter struggle. And, uh, you know, a lot of things are like that. Um, so, uh, so when you become involved, you know, you maybe initially you do something that seems fairly uh, neutral, like maybe doing a field survey. Then you come across human situations where people are involved in that struggle. You have to take side, you have to decide, you know, you cannot let things uh, happen. For example, you find evidence of corruption that people have been uh, exploited, then you have to do something, then you get dragged into a whole social situation which has its own dynamics. Um, so when you go through that learning, I think that uh, you become much more aware of the, of the systems of power and how they work and how uh, or, or their overwhelming uh, importance uh, and that applies also at the national level and then you read a lot of things in a new light, you know, whether it's the orientation of economic policy or of social policy. Um, the working of Indian democracy, I think you, you become, you, you develop, at least in my case, a very different understanding of Indian democracy. Uh, so these are the kinds of experiences that for me have been, I would not say more important than academic um, research or teaching, but I think, that I think of the two as complementary, because we need to think and to learn from you know, other experiences that we may not have been able to be part of personally as much as we need the practical experience. And I think that for me, the two uh, together can be greatly uh, eliminating. That's basically uh, <laughs> my personal experience. I've been involved in various, at various times, uh, in various ways in influencing what you call policy makers. But I don't think of it only as influencing policy makers. I mean, who is a policy maker in any case? I, th I think of it as a democratic process. I think of India by and large as a democratic country, even though there are big, very big limitations to Indian democracy. But there is a, it is an open society with freedom of expression and, and with many opportunities to become part of uh, various forms of democratic action, uh, which could be, as you say, trying to influence policymakers through media or various forums or talking to members of parliament. But it can also involve other things like maybe going to court, doing public interest litigation, or public demonstrations. So I think of it not just as you know, influencing policymakers is part part of this whole uh, 
um, engagement, but it's also it's more than more more importantly being part of a democratic process, which can be very rich in spite of all the limitations of Indian democracy, and uh, can bring about change, not because you're targeting a policymaker who has that power to do one thing, but because you are part of a movement uh, which can bring about change. And you know, this Employment Guarantee Act that I mentioned is it's a very good example of a case where it was possible to bring about a sort of legislation that really made a big difference to people. You know, today, every year, 50 million people work on this Employment Guarantee Act. So it's really, it's something, it's not the end of poverty by any means, but it's something that really matters to poor people. So it's a case where democratic practice was able to bring about an important change in spite of the generally elitist, and I would even say anti-poor people of the, sort of the, the general orientation of economic policy. And there are many things like that. The Right to Information Act, uh, uh, sorry, the Right to Information Act is another example of really extraordinary law that has changed, that has begun to change many things uh, in terms of how the democracy, uh, sorry, how the bureaucracy work and the kinds of access that people have to public information. And again, which was passed not because of one policymaker or several policymakers, but because of a pub public movement. And I really believe that in, in India there's a huge democratic space that can be used um, much more than it is used at the moment uh, to bring about that kind of change. So basically I see myself as being a small part of all that and uh, uh, that's, uh, that, that's where things like academic research, influencing policymakers and being part of social movements all come together. That's what I basically, that's where my heart is. <laughs>